Hey everyone, either welcome back or welcome to my channel. And in today's video, I want to talk about a couple of the diagnoses that I was given as possibilities before I had the MRI done that ultimately led to the diagnosis of idiopathic intracranial hypertension. So before I get into any more details, time for the intro. Hey everyone, my name is Ashley Stewart. Back in 2018, I was diagnosed with IIH. The long form of this name is called idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Some of you may also know this condition by its older names, either pseudotumor cerebri or benign intracranial hypertension. So if you're curious to learn more about what it's like to live with this condition, or what those of us living with this condition would like you to know, then I strongly encourage you to watch on. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell down below so that you get updated about further videos. I upload new content every Monday and Thursday afternoon. Before I had my MRI done, I was working with the doctors actually quite frequently at the time because they were trying to find something that they'd be able to refer me on to a specialist so that I'd be able to have access to better testing than what they do in the primary care. So in Canada, our healthcare system is actually based around primary care. So in order to see specialists, you have to get referred by your primary care physician or your family doctor to see specialists. Our specialists can have quite a bit of a wait time, but if they find something of significance when they're doing testing, they can actually move you up in higher priority. And this is what my family doctor was trying to do at that point in time. They were trying to find something that they'd be able to get me a few more answers as to what was going on because I had to wait a couple of months for the MRI since I was getting it through the public system. Because of the symptoms that I was having, I was actually, I think it was not a bad weight. It was only, I think I was, I think my doctor put in the request in May and I had my MRI done in July. So that's not bad at all. I want to talk about that specific time and particularly it was May, June that they were working with me to figure out possible different things that could be going on. I had a bunch of different blood tests done during this time. I had a bunch of different tests run at this time. I think it was to the point where it was almost over testing. I've been through a lot of testing and I'm all for limiting testing to what actually needs to be done because it is very, very stressful as a patient going through and you're not really sure as to what's going on. I know what a lot of these tests are because of having a little bit of a background in biomedical sciences, but honestly, this is a completely different area for me, so I can understand what all these tests mean, but what they're actually trying to get out of it a lot of the time, it really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Because I was having so much testing done, I was actually seeing my family doctor quite frequently during this time. My symptoms were starting to be put together a little bit. And so this is quite difficult for me to discuss, but I want to discuss this because I actually had somebody do a request for me to discuss what they thought I had besides IIH. One of them is going to make a lot of sense and the one other one I'm probably going to have to explain a little bit. So I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to some of the other comments on my videos but I have actually talked about this in a comment but I've never talked about this publicly. So before when I was in school they thought I could possibly have a brain tumor based upon my symptoms. So they decided to check what are called prolactin levels. And they thought it was a, a pituitary tumor. So this is a tumor on the pituitary gland. There's a lot of hormones that originate from the pituitary gland. In my case, the doctor back in, when was this? This was, I think, I think this was in February or March that I had my prolactin levels checked. I don't remember exactly when it was anymore because this is quite a while ago now. But I had my prolactin levels checked. And 
they were looking for significantly elevated prolactin levels. So if it's only slightly elevated, it can mean that I'm under stress. And I'm just like, well, you're probably going to find that due to the circumstances that my prolactin's a little bit elevated because I know I'm under a lot of stress. My prolactin came back only slightly elevated at that time. So they really thought at that point that it was, everything was being caused by stress. I still get quite angry when I think about this because I think stress should be a final rule out diagnosis just like idiopathic diagnoses are made when you rule absolutely everything out that it could be but basically they didn't give me an mri or schedule me for an mri at that point because they thought it was stress i think it was the end of may start of june i'm not even sure anymore like i said this was so long ago now it's such a blur and I was told at that point that based upon the symptoms that I was having, that it could be either MS or a brain tumor. So a brain tumor came up again, but there wasn't specifically pituitary tumor that I was told at that time, but they did think that it could be a brain tumor at that point. A brain tumor makes a lot of sense, as you guys know from the intro, because the old name for idiopathic intracranial hypertension is pseudotumor cerebri, which translates to false tumor of the brain in Latin. You have very similar symptoms to a brain tumor. The difference is that they don't find a tumor on the MRI. So they knew immediately that they had to schedule an MRI. And actually, I think now that thinking this back, this was almost right away because I had this MRI scheduled pretty much right at the start of May. My doctor got on it as fast as possible because we knew there would be a little bit of a wait. So they wanted to get that in as soon as possible. The second possible option that I was given was MS. So MS stands for multiple sclerosis. And this condition is an autoimmune condition where the body's own immune system attacks itself, starts attacking the protective layer that surrounds the nerves called myelin. So you have two different types of nerves in your body, unmyelinated and myelinated nerves. Our myelinated nerves are often our long nerves. And the way you can think about this to make it easy to remember is that your shorter nerves the one that sends shorter signals are going to be unmyelinated nerves so these are what nerves that don't need to have signals travel very far and then there are myelinated nerves it makes the signal travel a little bit faster I was having very similar symptoms to the early stages of multiple sclerosis. And they're more likely to check for it where I live because we have a very high amount of people who end up with MS in our area. It's a very common condition. And we talked about MS quite a bit during my degree because it does affect a lot of people in Saskatchewan and it seems to be that there's a correlation between cold temperatures so really really cold temperatures and people developing multiple sclerosis so it's an interesting finding I'm not able to really explain why. I don't even know if the researchers really understand this fully. That was basically the second diagnosis that I was given for what it could have been besides IIH. Those were the only two that were kind of gone over with me. The reason why they thought I had MS was I was having the double vision and dizziness and all of that. So it was a lot of the neurological symptoms that were going on. I finally kind of got on the right path of diagnosis once I had my MRI results. So I've talked about this before, but they did find signs of intracranial hypertension on the MRI. That's kind of pointed them in the right direction. Of course, at that time, they weren't able to tell me it was idiopathic. So they, I was given intracranial hypertension. And then they thought probably at that point that I probably had the idiopathic version just because I had a lot of the other factors involved, but they had to go through the process and rule it out. So I was pretty much immediately referred to a neurologist. And from there, I was referred to an ophthalmologist.
I basically have two doctors that manage my IIH through that way. So the ophthalmologist specifically manages the swelling of the optic nerves. And then the neurologist basically kind of is like the middle person who puts everything together and gives me my prescriptions for my medications and all of that kind of stuff. And honestly, like it's up to the patient too to do as much as we can to make this situation good for us as well. If you guys have any questions or anything that you'd like to add to this video, please leave a comment down below. And as for now, that's it for today. Bye everyone.